And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. She kept on. Tell me how you have this great strength. She kept on messing with him about his great strength. Mess with She gotta know. Mind you, this is infiltration. It's a snitch. She is delighted for the enemy. Verse 16, and it came to pass. When she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, See, there have not come a razor upon my head, or have been a Nazarite unto the Most High from my mother's womb, never cut my head. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she said and called for the masters of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath shown me all his heart. Then the masters of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in her hand. Why they say everybody have a price. You gotta watch people, boy. Double the price. She sold them out. Sold them out. That's why the scripture says. At least one. He pleads the ass because. 25 and 13. He said, give me any plague but the plague of the heart and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. Hmm. He said, I, verse 16, I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. He said, the wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkens her countenance like sackcloth, like she just did here. Verse 19, all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. As the climbing up of a sandy way is to the feet of the age of an old man going up, trying to go, in, or an old woman trying to climb up a sandy hill, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. It says, stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. It's because she looked good. See? And that's what you're seeing here with this woman. Delilah. Verse 18. And when Delilah, this is Judges 16, 18. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the masters of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, just one time, for he has shown me all his heart. Then the masters of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. It's wickedness. Now he trusted in her. Remember. Verse 4. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarep, whose name was Delilah. He loved this woman. And he trusted in this woman. 
not knowing that she was a snake. But he still loved her. But each time, I don't know how you have the understanding to realize that she was a snake. Because each time she was doing these things to him as he was telling her lies about what would take away his great strength. And she called him for the Philistines. He just broke where it was that he had said in her face until the next time she came bumping him about. Why he have his great strength? Verse 20, she said, the Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep. And he was sleeping, had the man come in. Another man come in and cut off his locks. Look at verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. She called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, the first thing be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he was not that the Most High was departed from him. He didn't know that the Most High was departed from him. What is it showing us? He can't trust everybody. Verse 21, but the Philippines, excuse me, but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes, blinded him, put out his eyes. All for what? Verse 4. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in, in the valley of Sarep, whose name was Delilah. He didn't know this woman well enough to know that this would happen to him in verse 21. But the Philistine, it's all for her to get paid. But the Philistine took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with feathers of brass he did grind in the prison house. They was ignorant because we see how weird the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaved. You know, they didn't even ball. So they were stupid, ignorant. I can't say ignorant because they knew that was how they abated his great strength by cutting off his locks. So they gonna let it grow back again? Go to uh, Judges, the 19th chapter. And it came to pass, verse 1, in those days when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, that's northern Israel, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. So he took a concubine out of the southern part of Israel, which is Bethlehem, Judah. And his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. She played the whore against him. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again, having his servant with him and a couple of asses, and she brought him into her father's house. And when the damsel, excuse me, when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him, and he abode with him three days. So did, 
So they did eat and drink and lodged there. And it came to pass on the fourth day, where they arose early in the morning that he rose up to depart. And the damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, Comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread, and afterward go your way. And they sat down and did eat and drink, both of them together. But the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. And when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him. Therefore he lies there again. <coughs> so he was doing the same thing over and over again. His father-in-law trying to keep, you know, trying to have him stay there with him. So I say, hey, it's giving us easy time. Go ahead and, you know, sleep on over again. Lodge here. Stay with me. Verse 10. But the man would not tarry that night. But he rose up and departed and came over against Judas, which is Jerusalem. And there were with him two asses saddled. His concubine also was with him. And when they were by Judas, the day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee. And let us turn in into this city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. His master said unto him, We will not turn aside hither, hither to this city of the stranger, of a stranger, that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah. That lets you know how the Most High, he separated us from all nations, and he wouldn't even go into this nation because they were not our people. They were not of the children of Israel. And he said unto the servant, Come and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed on and went their way, and the sun went down upon them, where they were by Gibeah, which belonged to Benjamin. So it's in the land of Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah, and when he went in, he sat him down in the street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodging. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at Eden, which was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. They were so-called Jamaicans. They lived today with the Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a welfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou? And whence cometh thou? And he said unto them, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of the Mount Zion, excuse me, Mount Ephraim. From thence am I. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Most High, and there is no man that received me to house. Nobody's let me, you know, come into their house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me, and for thy handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. Shalom. A thought. However, let all thy wants lie upon me. So whatever you need, let it lie upon me. Only lies not in the street. Don't stay in the street. Don't sleep in the street. So he brought him into his house. See his hospitality? He brought him into his house and gave provender unto the asses, fed the asses, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. He fed them. Gave him something to drink. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about, and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. Bring forth the man that came into your house, that we may have sex with him. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, no, my brethren, no. I pray you, do not so wickedly. 
So for a man to have sex with another man is wickedness. He said, I pray you do not so wickedly, saying that this man is coming to my house. Do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. See? So you look at uh, Romans 1.26. For this cause the most I gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which was against nature. That's women with women. That's a vile affection according to the Bible, according to the most high. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust, just like these Benjamites are burning their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseen, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat, which was right. Going back to Judges 19, as it is written. He offered him two women, his own daughter. Man. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken, they didn't want to listen to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her lord, her master was, till it was light. Her master rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman his concubine was falling down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the thrust. And he said unto her, uh, unto her, Up, and let us be going. But none answered. No answer. And the man took her up upon an ass. And the man rose up and got him unto his place. And when he was coming to his house, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into 12 pieces and sent her into all the coast of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said, there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt until this day, consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. So that's when Israel went to war with Benjamin. But you see what this, what this woman had done, what this concubine had done. In verse 2, Judges 19 and 2, and his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house, Bethlehem, Judah, and was there for whole months. See? That was wrong. Or you look at uh, Genesis 3, 2 and 18. Genesis 2 and 18, and the Most High Power said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. So the woman is going to be created. It 